What's going on, y'all? Attorney Tom here. It's time for a fan favorite, USCSB React. In today's video, I'm going to be reacting to ignored warnings, explosions in St. Louis, as many of y'all know. In my day job, I'm a catastrophic personal injury lawyer, and I deal with refinery explosions um, too frequently. And make sure you stick around to the end where I assign my percentages of fault on the parties that, uh, that we discuss. Let's jump right into it. Attorney Tom. April 3rd, 2017. The Loy Lang Box Company of St. Louis, Missouri. One worker and three members of the public were fatally injured when a pressure vessel catastrophically failed, causing an explosion that launched the pressure vessel into a neighboring building. The Chemical Safety Board investigated and found that over the course of many years, an area of the failed pressure vessel had thinned due to a known corrosion mechanism that was poorly controlled at the facility. And the CSB found that Loy Lang repeatedly ignored clear warnings that corrosion was causing major problems. Okay, so from the very beginning, we get a couple of very interesting tidbits. First, who was hurt? One worker from the facility, three members of the public. For sure, the members of the public are going to have unlimited, or not, shouldn't say unlimited, but they, they will have the most amount of le legal recourse available to them. It is possible that the worker at the facility has some sort of workers' comp issue, or, you know, what a lawyer will likely do is try to make some third-party uh, liability or prove gross negligence in order to get around any sort of um, arbitrary cap on um, the legal rights of the injured party who is a worker for the facility. Additionally, the title of the video is Ignored Warnings, and uh, the narrator already told us that it was a known corrosion mechanism that caused this, and they ignored these warning signs for years. So uh, that's, you know, I, I'm sure we're about to be educated a whole lot more on that. Corrosion was causing major problems within its operations. In fact, prior to its failure, Loy Lang ran the pressure vessel normally, despite knowing that it was leaking. It was a safety emergency that unfolded in plain sight. And I would go as far as to say it wasn't a safety emergency. It was a disaster waiting to happen, right? It was a ticking time bomb. If you're using something at its normal capacity and you know there's leaks. Loy Lang manufactured corrugated cardboard which is used to make other products such as boxes and retail displays. Part of the process to make corrugated cardboard involved heating paper using a steam generation system. The steam generation system used municipal water. The water was fed into a vessel called the makeup tank. There, the water was treated with chemicals and heated to approximately 200 degrees Fahrenheit to remove dissolved gases, including oxygen. This was necessary because oxygenated water is corrosive to steel equipment. The water then flowed from the makeup tank into a larger pressure vessel called the semi-closed receiver, or SCR. The SCR was comprised of a cylindrical center and two end pieces. All three sections of the SCR were made of steel and susceptible to oxygen corrosion. The SCR was kept under pressure so that the water inside would retain more heat than it could at atmospheric pressure. From the SCR, the water was pumped to a generator that converted it to steam. The steam then cooled, condensed back into water, and flowed again into the SCR. At the end of the workday, Loy Lang operators shut down the steam generation system, leaving the SCR filled with warm water. At the beginning of the next workday, operators would restart the steam generation system. During the daily startup, operators would initially block the flow of water into the SCR from both the makeup tank and from the condensed steam returning from the corrugation process. At the same time, the water remaining in the SCR from the previous workday was pumped to the steam generator. When the SCR was nearly empty, Operators would then allow water to flow into it from the makeup tank. Loy Lang's steam system was used to heat the water in the makeup tank. But at this point in the startup process, the water in the makeup tank may not have been effectively heated, so not all of the dissolved oxygen in the water was removed. Therefore, during startup, 
oxygenated water entered the SCR instead of the heated oxygen-free water used during normal operation. This presented a serious corrosion hazard within the steel vessel. Eventually, hot condensed steam returning from the corrugation process was available, and operators opened a valve to allow it to flow into the SCR. But due to the design of the SCR, water did not flow easily through the bottom head. Operators could achieve flow in the bottom head by opening a manual valve and allowing water to drain from the SCR, a procedure known as a blowdown. So what I'm looking for is, in addition to the inadequate maintenance of the corrosion hazard that the facility would have had to, you know, do routinely inspect, make sure it's not, not corroded, is there also something called a design defect? Is there a products case here? Meaning, if you represent the worker and there is some worker's compensation bar, um, you, you want to also go after the people who made the SCR if it's a separate company. And the reason for that is again, it's third party liability. Um, could this have been designed safer so um, corrosion didn't occur? Could different materials have been used? Or, or is it really just simply um, it was designed effectively and the facility failed to properly maintain it? Those are the things that, that I'm looking and watching for. But between blowdowns, a small volume of oxygenated water would remain trapped in the bottom head, and over time, the oxygenated water corroded the steel. The potential for corrosion was a known problem. During its time operating the SCR, Loy Lang experienced at least three leaks due to corrosion. In response to a 2012 leak, a repair company removed most of the bottom head. The company patched it with new steel, leaving the remainder of the bottom head in place. Okay, so now we've add, added two factors into it. One, they've known about this. This has been a known issue with the SCR2. Now we have a third-party repair company. So did the third-party repair company adequately fix the, the bottom of uh, the SCR? The bottom head that was left in place was also thinned from corrosion. And between 2012 and 2017, it continued to degrade. So they did replace this bottom head, but this very sizable amount of the head was left untouched and it is thinning. So that is another factor. Should they have done a complete replacement? Eventually started to leak. On Friday, March 31st, Loy Lang operators noticed a leak that appeared to be coming from underneath the SCR. A local welding company was contacted to assess the SCR, but was not available until the following Monday, April 3rd. Okay, so if you've identified a leak and you have something that's potentially hazardous, in this situation, the proper response would have been to shut down operation until it was fixed or you got the okay from an expert. You don't just go and continue on your everyday life. I don't take sponsors. The only thing I ask is that if you need a lawyer, contact my team for a free consultation. While most people know me as a catastrophic personal injury lawyer, I'm actually a partner at two law firms that handle way more than just catastrophic injury. If you were the victim of securities fraud, received a notification that your info was included in a data breach, developed cancer as a result of a bad drug or toxic exposure, and many other situations, we may be able to help. It's important you talk to a lawyer right away to understand your options. If your case is not the best fit with us, we can help you find a great lawyer by using our national network of attorneys. Please click the link down below for a free consultation. Loy Lang continued operating the leaking pressure vessel throughout the remainder of the day on Friday and shut down the steam generation system as normal that evening. On Monday, a Loy Lang operator began the regular startup process around 6 a.m. At approximately 7.20 a.m., the vessel catastrophically failed. When suddenly exposed to atmospheric pressure, the water in the vessel flashed into steam, greatly expanding in volume. The result was a boiling liquid expanding vapor explosion, or BLEVI. The explosion launched the SCR from the Loy Lang building and into the air, 
It traveled 520 feet, crashing through the roof of a nearby business a block away. Other debris damaged a third building as well as a parked vehicle. One Loy Lang operator and three employees of the nearby business were fatally injured. Can you imagine being at your job, just sitting down, doing your thing, and then all of a sudden you're dead because of some YouTube company wanted to operate their YouTube during its investigation, the CSB found four safety issues contributed to the explosion at Loy Lang. Okay, before the narrator says what they found, uh, I want to guess what they want to say. I always, I always look for the word foreseeability. That's just instantly where my mind goes. So foreseeable. Uh, the S SCR was steel, so it's foreseeable that oxygen is going to cause some corrosion. So because of corrosion, uh, you know that it's foreseeable. You need to have routine inspections. I didn't hear anything about routine inspections other than they just fixed it when it became leaky. The best safety is prevention. So um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go ahead and say um, probably something to do with the design, something to do with failing to inspect on a regular basis, um, not doing adequate repairs when there is something identified, like the only only half of the bottom head and not the entire thing. Um, and then probably lack of training, probably lack of training because the the em employee um, identified the leak and they continued about their business anyway when they should have stopped all operation until they could have had it fixed. Those are my, that's my guess. Uncontrolled pressure vessel corrosion, ineffective pressure vessel repair, gaps in pressure vessel inspection and regulation, and deficient process safety management systems. The first safety issue is pressure vessel corrosion. I got like half, 50%. Oxygenated water and steam generation systems causes corrosion in steel and must be managed and controlled. But at Loy Lang, there was a history of equipment failures caused by oxygen corrosion in the steam system and three documented leaks in the SCR, including the 2012 leak that led to the repair of a portion of the bottom head, five documented corrosion failures in other areas of the system, and numerous- Wow, five other corrosion errors in the other parts of the system. Foreseeable. We found that all of the corrosion failures occurred in components of Loy Lang's steam system that when operated under normal design conditions should have experienced minimal or no corrosion at all. He already said operated under normal design conditions. So it's probably not the design defect, it was probably operator error, meaning they weren't using the system as it was designed. They weren't inputting the right material, the right water, the right temperature, the right training. Okay. For instance, the CSB found that Loy Lang steam system water routinely lacked sufficient concentration of chemicals called oxygen scavengers that are used to remove oxygen from the water. And Loy Lang startup practices likely introduced oxygenated water into the SCR daily. The result was that over time, uncontrolled oxygen caused corrosion that thinned portions of the bottom head of the SCR so much that the vessel catastrophically failed. The second safety issue found by the CSB is pressure vessel repair. In 2012, the repair made to the bottom head of the SCR left a corroded steel ring in the vessel. The ring continued to corrode for five years until it failed on the day of the incident. Okay, well, ultimately I think the facility is probably more responsible. I, I still do question the repair. Who was doing the repair? It's a third party company. Why didn't they repair everything? Were they under instruction from the facility to not repair the entire bottom head? Uh, and also why didn't the facility, you know, take note of, of that? I mean, there's a lot of aspects to the repair that, uh, of course, if you were handling this case as the lawyer, you would get discovery. You know, you would you would definitely dive dive into. The CSB found that this repair did not comply with regulatory code. The regulatory body with authority at Loy Lang is the City of St. Louis. The City of St. Louis Mechanical Code required repairs of pressure vessels to conform to code from the National Board of Boiler and Pressure Vessel Inspectors. 
The 2012 repair of the SCR was performed by a national board R-Stamp holding company, which meant the company was authorized to perform repairs to pressure vessels in accordance with the national board inspection code. But the CSB found that the repair did not adhere to that code, which generally requires that all defective material be removed. As a result, the 2012 SCR leak repair was ineffective, incomplete, and dangerous. And it was the unacceptably thin remaining material from that repair that failed initiating the incident. At the time of the 2012 repair, National Board Code required the involvement of a repair inspector, but did not require specific inspection points during the repair process to provide quality assurance. Instead, the level of scrutiny applied to any repair was left to the individual inspector's discretion. In this case, the repair inspector approved the repair plan without first evaluating the SCR, and the inspector did not personally witness the inappropriate repair to the SCR bottom. So I would anticipate that would probably be a defense. They would say, hey, listen, we did everything we're supposed to do, and it passed inspection. We're not the inspectors. The inspectors passed. It doesn't get you off the hook. Since the 2012 repair, the National Board made significant changes to the code, requiring inspectors to designate inspection points throughout the repair process. That's why this stuff's important. It's important to talk about because we need to continue to make changes that we've identified. Again, just because something is up to code doesn't mean you can't be negligent. A third safety issue found by the CSB is pressure vessel inspection and regulation. At the time of the incident, the St. Louis City Code required an annual inspection of boilers and pressure vessels by city inspectors. But during the lifespan of the SCR, Loy Lang never applied for an installation or repair permit or otherwise registered the vessel with the city. Therefore, the city had no knowledge of the SCR and no means of proactively initiating an inspection. The CSB found that despite the regulatory requirement that the SCR undergo annual inspections, there was no record of a city inspector ever having inspected the pressure vessel. Furthermore, the city had not inspected the Loy Lang steam generators generally since 2010. Yeah, well, the SCR was unregistered. So, of course, the city's not going to inspect it. Now, the I'm sure the USCSB is about, the guy's about to get on the stage or the camera, and he's going to say, ah, oh, the city of St. Louis should have done this. Was well, the lawyer suing these companies? You don't want to sue the city. You want to sue these companies because clearly they are the ones who are most responsible. I don't want to trust my safety to a government that probably won't have consequences. The reason why these lawsuits work in preventing these things from happening in the future is because you can go after where it hurts. You think some city employee is going to care if you get some verdict against them? No. Laura Lang, the repair people, these are the people who are clearly most responsible. But let's listen to what the USCSB guy says about the city of St. Louis. Unfortunately, the city of St. Louis missed opportunities to prevent this incident. Had the city performed more regular inspections of the Loy Lang steam system, it could have identified the unregistered SCR, sealed it from operation, and ensured its inspection, potentially catching the corrosion hazard before the vessel failed. At the time of the incident, despite requiring an annual inspection by city inspectors, the city code offered no specific guidance on inspection methods or tasks beyond the annual frequency. The inspections were specified to be as thorough as circumstances permit. The city of St. Louis has since changed its inspection requirements to require that boiler and pressure vessel inspections be performed by an approved third-party agency rather than city inspector. Good. We want experts. We don't want some city employee. I'm sorry. It, it frustrates me. Okay, before I assign my percentages of fault... Let's go through the main points. One, we don't think this was a design defect. It was actually working as intended, but had Laura Lang put water that was not oxygenated into the system, there likely would have not been the corrosion that persisted. And persist, it did, because Laura Lang had a history of corrosion events. They said at least five. The SCR had 
additionally experienced other problems that even required it to be repaired in 2012. The repair in 2012 was not complete, so there's definitely some third-party liability on this repair company for not completely fixing the lower head that they should have. Um, and the last thing that I think really just makes me mad and puts it over the top is that just days before the explosion, they identified the leak. They even called somebody about the leak, but they continued to operate as normal instead of shutting it down. So there's lack of training, lack of oversight, lack of prevention, lack of regular inspections. All that being said, I think it's 90% uh, uh, the fault of the facility Lorlang, 10%, now maybe 95% fault of Lorlang, 5% the fault of the third-party repair service. All right, that's my result. Talk to you all later. Bye.